Hey everyone, it's Jim T. Graham with rcgroups.com and today we have some breaking news and we're doing a live hangout to discuss it. I have my editors with me, Mr. Matt Gunn on my left. What's happening, Matt Gunn? Hi, I'm flying legally and it's part 107. <laughs> yes, that's the voice of a drone. And to the left of Matt Gunn is Jason Cole. What's happening, Jason? Hey everybody, I'm the sane one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we knew it was coming, and we woke up this morning, and uh, we already have an article up on rcgroups.com. We also expect to have some live viewers jump in here at some point, so feel free to utilize the Q&A, the question button. Hey, we already have live viewers going. I will monitor the Q&A. If anyone has any questions, we'll see uh, what we can do to answer them. But if you go to rcgroups.com and our commercial FPV section, which is new-ish, uh, we have the story up. FAA finalizes rules for small commercial unmanned aircraft systems. The keyword there, Matt Gunn, is commercial. This is not for the line of sight hobbyists or even the FPV hobbyists. This is for those wanting to make some money in the UAV field. And since uh, both of you at some point have flown in this capacity in the past, uh, I think that you're great guys to talk on this topic. So I've read and uh, actually created the story. So I've gone line by line of the release. And I know that you guys have read this too. So let's talk about uh, what we think and if this is a good direction and if the FAA handled this correctly. Matt? Oh, man, where to begin? Well, I have always been a strong uh, opponent of the Section 333 it just was a way for the FAA to gain a quick control of a, of a situation that they thought was escalating out of control, a.k.a. Uh, commercial drone operations, commercial UAV operations. So they said, hey, let's until we get the rules going, let's make it that anybody that wants to fly commercial uh, has to have a full-scale pilot's license, and that should really cut down, and then we'll just threaten everybody with some extreme fines, Kind of like what they've already done for the hobbyists, and then we'll make a uh, you know uh, we'll make an example out of a couple of guys, and they've already done that. And, and Jim, you published a nice article of all the commercial operators that they've uh, slapped on the wrist with some big fines. Thanks to Jason so, from Motherboard for that great story. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, and that was in essence the 333, which people jumped through hoops, got pilots' license. Those that were already pilots sort of had an in. And then they said, okay, now that we can see that this works, we can see a, a, a sharp or uh, even, a, I think it's actually a gradual decrease in the incursions and incidents with uh, uh, the D word, and uh, that's drones for all you guys that aren't on top of the game. So they said, let's go ahead and push out part 107, which we've been talking about for a few years now. So, um, you know, part 107... Uh, in essence, takes away the pilot's license, replaces it with a UAV certificate, UAV license of sorts that will be much more attainable. Um, what that is, we'll talk about. So, yeah, I think that I mean, there's a lot to it, and 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 Jason, you can expand. I just gave the really brief of uh, of of the part 107 summary, but Jason, yeah, for me, for me, this is what commercial operators have been waiting for, especially those who did not have real pilot's license, uh, because the Part 3033 was never legally binding. Um, the FAA never fined anyone for commercial use. They knew it wasn't legal. Um, it was just a way for them to try to, you know, have some control over what was happening, and it, it didn't work. There was still thousands and thousands of operators out there operating commercially that did not have 333s, and, and doing safe. that perfectly legally and safely. So... But they did want to be legal, right? So they wanted the real rules to come out, and that's finally what this is. And, and it is finally, um, you know, obtainable and but mostly good, right? So there's there's things about it that are appropriate, um, and there's things that's not. So um, what I really think is not good that I personally you know, would like to see changed on this, but may not ever happen, is the no flying at night. 
No, I'm looking at that right now. Daylight ops only or civil well, you twilight. Can fly Thirty minutes past sunset, but there's a lot of jobs. I've flown movie gigs that were night shots. You're flying at two or three in the morning, and under this, that makes that illegal. But does it make it less safe flying at night? No, I, I just don't understand the reasoning for that. I think it's perfectly safe to fly at night. There's lights. There's less air traffic in the air at night. There's no reason that we shouldn't be allowed to operate commercially at night when a recreational pilot can. So it's one of those weird double standards where it's okay to fly it recreationally at night and then it's not commercially and because you're doing it commercially makes it less safe. It makes absolutely no sense to me. So I, I hope that can get overturned sometime in the future. But until then... Just about everything else I'm pretty happy with. So I, I'm happy with the uh, line of sight. That's no big deal. That's the way you should be flying anyway. I'm happy with the 400-foot uh, altitude because it's, not, yeah, that's a, totally uh, it's not a hard limit. So you can fly past 400 feet altitude. Um, now they say you need to be within 400 feet of a structure if you're doing that or not over sparsely populated areas. There's these different instances where different things are okay, but I like the kind of relaxed, um, ambiguous sort of rules to this. So some people might not like that. They think that might give the FAA a more wiggle room to say you were doing something wrong, but I think it gives us more wiggle room to say we were doing something correctly. Um, yeah, there's a pretty ambiguous statement, no careless or reckless operations. Yeah. That is in itself what got uh, this whole mess started with the infamous, uh, what was it, Virginia Tech? Uh, Trappy, Trappy yeah. Incident. Yep. Yeah, it was reckless and careless operation. That's the only thing that they've been doing, is yeah. getting people for that. They didn't even find them for commercial, you know, because he got paid. They were finding them for reckless endangerment kind of stuff. So that's where that can go. So just you still have to be smart, fly safe, you know. You want to make sure you're doing things the right way and, and are operating in a safe manner, and that should be pretty common sense, right? I think we all know when we see something that's dangerous and inappropriate, it's never really a question, hey, is that okay? Right. And it's now, always that. Like, oh, go ahead. One thing I did I did see, uh, no flying from an aircraft. That's, you know, who does that? But I did get a little bit like a jump scare when I saw the no flying from a moving vehicle because I've Unless done that. Before. Sparsely operated, sparse, sparsely yeah. um, populated areas. Yeah, Thank so you. I'm glad they threw that in there. So I'm not going to go flying from a vehicle flying through downtown Nashville, right? But if we're out in the country shooting a music video and there's, you know, you need to chase a car down a field or something, you need to do that so you can maintain line of sight. You need to be in a vehicle moving along uh, with the uh, the subject that you're filming, then you should be able to do that. And if you're over a field, that's nothing endangerment there. So I'm glad that they added that little tag to, to that rule. So. I think that this really uh, is positive, and it's you know not what we're used to, which is really crazy things coming out of the FAA. FAA, and this seems sort of common sense and and done right. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah, and the fact that it's happening, you know, relatively quickly. They came out with this proposal a long time ago, and it's taken task force and whatever, and you know, all their litigation stuff that they had to do to get this. But now it's here, and it's actually real in August. So we're a couple months away, less than a couple months away from this being part 107. You can go out and fly and, and be legal once we get the certificate. Now we don't know how much that's going to cost or what the test is or any of that stuff yet, but that's that stuff will be announced I'm sure uh, shortly. I do think it's interesting that they themselves are saying that this will open up new jobs and pathways towards fully integrating the UAS into the nation's airspace. So that's a pretty positive statement coming straight out of the FAA themselves. What was it, uh, $80 billion or something to that nature? I yeah. th and that's only a guess. They're guessing how many people actually fly uh, drones and mm -hmm. FPV, and they're, I guarantee, grossly uh, low on that number. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's uh, let's quickly talk about the pilot in command certification process, which Jason uh, just was talking about. They don't have that defined yet. They've got to work quickly because um, we know how slow the FAA can move or how lightning fast they can move um, if they want to implement something that they did last Christmas with our uh, registration process. So it basically says that a person operating a small UAS must either hold a remote pilot airman certificate with a small UAS rating 
or be under the direct supervision of one who does hold that certificate. And to qualify for the remote pilot certificate, the person must demonstrate the aeronautical knowledge by either passing a knowledge test at an approved FAA center or hold a Part 61 pilot certificate other than a student pilot and complete a, a flight review within the last 24 months. So there, uh, it, does it... Does that say they're giving you the option to have a full scale as well? So it sounds or, like, yep. Yeah. And it sounds like you don't even have to have the certificate to fly. So say a father goes out and gets the certificate, but his son's a way better pilot, doesn't have the certificate, as long as the dad's there supervising the, the flight, the son is allowed to fly. So that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah, a Part 61 pilot uh, certificate holder may obtain a temporary RPA certificate immediately upon submission of their application for a permanent one. Is that what you're saying? No, under the uh, a person operating a small UAS must either hold a remote pilot airman certificate mm -hmm. with a small UAA rating or be under the direct supervision of a person who does. Oh, there you go. All so right. So be the pilot in command. The old school yeah. buddy box, right? Yeah. <laughs> and no airworthiness certification is required, which was going to be a big problem because there are no airworthiness uh, standards for for our craft. It's you know, impossible. Yeah. It is impossible. You, yeah. There's just uh, too many that are created out there to group them into full-scale aircraft. So You know, I don't think I read it in here. Have they really defined what commercial is to them? Well, I'll tell you what they did say. They did say that Part 107 does not apply to model aircraft that satisfy all the criteria specified in 336, which is the, uh, um, as we know, the the hobby. So they they defined what it's not. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, you, the most common use cases are going to be guys doing aerial video and photography for hire. You want You want some drone footage? I'm going to charge you some money for it. You're going to pay me. That's commercial use. We're talking uh, agriculture, you know, somebody wants to do a uh, flight over a farm and, and spot cows and see who's pregnant or not or where mm -hmm. they need fertilizer or water and infrared. Um, you know, those are kind of commercial operations. Um, it's not going to be, hey, I want to go take pictures of my house, you know, for fun. That's not commercial. Yeah, you don't have to have one for that. Um but uh, one thing that I oh my god I totally let sorry. me interject we are not lawyers we're simply stating our opinion yeah right. and I think another area that will benefit is this really gray area of team pilots you always see these posts about what what about a team pilot what about a, a someone that works in the industry and incidentally flies stuff like that and that should take care of that that should satisfy part 107 should satisfy that even though team pilot was never defined and you get you get a lot of um, uh, conjecture about what uh, a team pilot actually is is that for right. hire or not yay or nay you're gonna get both sides of the coin yeah um, I, I think, would argue that that doesn't apply to part 107 that that would okay. be under I mean this is my opinion right so you could argue that it is commercial in nature that that pilot is getting paid to go there and fly but my argument would be that the flight itself is not commercial in nature it is recreational in nature um, so that would disqualify it from being a commercial operation. But, hey, there's a million opinions out there for a million people. So. Well, your opinion still uh, says the same thing. It makes it still, it makes it safe for, yeah, it makes yeah. it, you know, legit is the word I'm looking for. Right. For team pilot. So. We have a lot of live viewers on right now, so if you have any questions, there's a button up to your right that would allow you to ask a QA, and a and we're happy to discuss or attempt to answer those. So, so guys, what's next? Um, you think this is going to satisfy things for a while? Do you think they're going to move straight into uh, model aircraft operators and things like that? This will have a pretty good effect on the business, the commercial industry, at least in the United States, because there are uh, insurance agencies. So the guys that are doing, I'm not talking about, you know, one-man shops that are going out and trying to get real estate pictures and videos for comp you know for people and just kind of doing it on the down low I'm talking about the serious business industry commercial you know guys that are wanting to fly that need to have insurance need to have all this protection um, for them and it's going to really help those guys out that didn't have pilot's license because now they can get legal in the eyes of the FAA 
to where the insurance companies will now you know allow them to to hold an insurance certificate, which will allow them to get more jobs as the higher end productions will require this Part 107 role to be satisfied and insurance and different things in order for them to hire you. So it's going to open up even more job opportunities uh, for drone pilots. So I think yeah. that's a great thing. Well, I don't see the Part 107 interfering much with the 336 in, in registration for hobbyists. I think that there are two separate uh, areas here. Yes, the, um, the registration sort of uh, set a, a pathway to see if, if Part 107 would work, and it did because there are now more educated people out there, ho more educated hobbyists that are flying. You don't see all the incursions. You don't see all the news media anymore of, of people uh, you know, uh, flying into the side of buildings as much as you used to. So I think, uh, in my humble opinion, I think that the 107 is going to stay on its own path, and then the hobbyist registration that the FAA implemented back in uh, December is going to stay on its own path. I think that they may run parallel to each other, but you won't. I, I personally do not think that they're going to be. Um, they're going to do the tests for hobbyists. I just don't see that happening. No, yeah. Yeah, they may have hinted at it and, and said, and it may have been the doom and gloom situation for all the hobbyists. But we're still flying. And I think that uh, it's going to remain low key, and people will do their registrations. You won't see many spot checks at the fields. Uh, this thing's been going for over six months now, and and you may have the rogue uh, law enforcement officer or the rogue FAA field uh, FISDO that wants to get out there and and cause static. And they always seem to get reeled back in, don't they? They always see like the 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 most long, recent one, right? Yeah, the 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 FAA field rep goes out there, does some sort of spot check on stuff, and then they then uh, Michael Huerta issues a statement. He's or basically from the FAA in in DC and says, "Hey, we took care of this guy. He's kind of going crazy." So yeah. <laughs> that seems to be the way it is. Everyone's still operating. Uh, I like a, I like 107 a lot. And I actually feel bad for the people that spent ten thousand dollars on a pilot's license yeah. for three thirty-three. Yeah, I tried to tell people we had local guys saying they're going to go get their pilot's license to to get a three thirty-three, and I'm like, just wait. It could take three years. It could be done in two months, and that rule is void. It you, does no longer requires that. I'm like, you just either really want a pilot's license and doing it for that, but if you're doing it just to get the three thirty-three, don't waste your money. Now, 333 will sort of uh, work for over 55 pounds, and uh, there'll be something that it'll it'll still be trucking along. So unless you're flying a shadow, and I don't think you have much to worry yeah. about. Yeah. Well, for those of you that are watching this on YouTube, we are with rcgroups.com. We have a commercial FPV section, and that's where you'll find this press release from the FAA as well as the video you're watching right now. We also have... And this is a pretty hot little area. We have the model aircraft and drone advocacy section. And this is where people talk about current daily news that comes out on anything related to this. So that's another section you can check out on rcgroups.com. Guys, do you think we've uh, covered this for now until it's time to talk again? That's pretty much it. Yeah, and I get, I'm get i very excited. I get to put an N number on the side of this beauty. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, so I've been operating for years. Jason's been operating for years. It's uh, it, I'm I'm very excited to start advertising again for my personal business and and uh, being legit. You know, this is very exciting times. As you can see in my uh, lower thirds, right here, I'm cautiously <laughs> optimistic. <laughs> Well, I'm excited the FAA has uh, done something that we all like because I don't know that that's happened yet. So that's pretty exciting stuff. And Indeed. I would say give it time. That may change. But uh, this is good stuff. All right, everyone. You've been watching the RC Group's live discussion about the new FAA rules. I'm Jim T. Graham. We have Matt Gunn and Jason Cole. Thank you guys for taking time out of your day to talk about this uh, topic. And yes, we'll sir. We'll be hitting you back if there's any other updates like this that come out in the news just as soon as possible. All righty. rcgroups.com.